Well, good afternoon. These are true tales of my African adventures. May this inspire you, deter you, caution you, and above all, entertain you. There is a snake which is little known, especially in terms of envenomation. In fact, there are two. I'll mention both of them. The one is called a bird snake or vine snake or twig snake, uh, found in southern Africa. The other one is the Boomslang. Boomslang, Boom is Afrikaans for tree and slung is Afrikaans for snake. Afrikaans is a language spoken predominantly in South Africa. It's only spoken in other places because people who speak Afrikaans go to other places. Interesting language. Now the bird snake or the vine snake has a very, very, very potent hematoxin like the Boomslang. Luckily, bird snakes don't often bite. They make a big threatening posture, blow up their necks with air to look bigger because they're very thin tree climbing snakes. And there is a folklore <clears throat> that if you're walking in the forests or in the savanna, woodland, and a bird snake bites you, you will only live to see the rooftops of your home. And as you see the rooftop, at that point you will die. I just wonder how many people have died having been bitten by one of these or a suspected one and then seen the rooftops of their homes since thought is known to kill people when bitten by a snake. And there is much evidence of that. The first person who was killed by a bird snake, in fact, I don't think, I, I don't even know how many people are, have been killed by bird snakes. It can't be many, not more than two or three, as my memory serves me, was a person in then Rhodesia who allowed one to bite him to prove that the venom wasn't potent. Well, he died. And I did a stupid thing once, allowing a, a, a semi-venomous snake to give me a full, hard, deep bite also to prove that the snake was not very venomous. Um, I didn't die, as is evident. But uh, stupid things like that can have very serious consequences. So don't ever do the hero thing and experiment on yourself like the poor man in uh, Rhodesia. Um, now, going to the Boomslang, um, I tell you the story because I had a harrowing experience once with a Boomslang, and I've caught many, many, many Boomslang. Sometimes on a day in the Western Cape, in the pine forests there, in amongst the sand dunes, I could catch 30 or 40 um, during mating season. They used to accumulate in the trees and if you looked from underneath you'd see this bright yellow belly of the males curled up like a big yellow sausage and then up you go and you catch them. Luckily Boomslang don't normally try to bite you, especially the ones in the Cape. They're particularly calm and uh, they're in no way aggressive. Uh, I have hardly ever had one of those snakes, even though I've caught so many, try to bite me. Now, the venom is dangerously hematoxic. It is considered, in fact, to be the most venomous snake in all of Africa, and it would compete in the world, because drop for drop, the venom is so potent, there is virtually no other snake which can kill you with the same minute quantity of venom. They are back fanged, which means the fangs are situated far back from the front of the mouth, sort of midway under the eye, but they can open their mouths up to 170 degrees and so quite easily bite you wherever they wanted to. But it's not an effective bite like a mamba bite, not effective at all. So. Um, they were considered harmless too, up until I think it was 1957 when a chap called Carl Schmidt and he worked at a zoo in America. Can you believe it? I think it was in Colorado. And uh, he got bitten by a juvenile, well it wasn't juvenile, they had raised this worm slung in their facility. He got bitten, only one fang penetration, I think it was his left or right thumb. 
and within 24 hours he was dead. Can you imagine that? An American being killed by the African snake with the most potent venom, drop for drop, in America, of all places. Poor man. He, um, he thought they were also not very venomous and he recorded all his symptoms until close to his death. Um, a remarkable story. But not many people have been killed by Wormslung. I think uh, if there are 10 people dead from Wormslung bites, that's a lot. Uh, the venom is so potent, it is unbelievable. And if you're bitten by a Wormslung and envenomated, nothing will save you except Wormslung antivenom. It is specific antivenom made specifically for Wormslung bites, tree snake bites. And it can only be obtained once you have been bitten by one of these. Then it will be released to be used on you. Very, very, very interesting situation. You will bleed, incidentally, from every orifice in your body. Your nose, your eyes, your ears, your gums, any scratch on the body, your anus. You will vomit blood. You will from your genitalia, you will uh, uh, hemorrhage and you will have subcutaneous hemorrhaging under the skin, large patches of uh, hemorrhaging. I've seen the photographs of those, they're quite awful to look at. And uh, it takes a long time to kill you. Um, if you get a good dose of venom, you may die quite quickly in 24 hours or so, like Carl Schmidt. But usually with um, the dose you get, which is maybe a scratch, a quick bite, a fleeting bite, it could take 72 hours before you die. But die you will. You get the right amount of venom in you, which is microscopic, you will die. Now, having caught so many Wormslung, it's like driving. You see, if you're going to drive every single day of your life, or virtually every single day of your life, there will come a time when you indeed may nearly have an accident or indeed have a minor accident or even a major one but it goes with the territory you drive a lot you will sooner or later have a close shave or you may have the accident if you catch a lot of snakes a lot of wormslung as i did the time will come when you're going to have a close shave so i've had a few of those the second worst one I had, if I could put it that way, was when a Wormslung had pushed its head and about uh, 10 inches of its uh, upper body through some uh, bird wire and got stuck. He couldn't pull himself back in. I found the poor snake there and it looked in a bad way and it was resting its head and neck on the wire where it pushed himself through. And uh, just out of compassion, my hand went straight to his head to grab it behind the head without any precaution um, so that I could then maneuver it back through the wire. And uh, of course, as soon as my hand got within reach, he swiped sideways at my hand and with a very wide gape and missed my finger by an absolute fraction and I it was, all happened in slow motion and I got to see the mouth at 170 degrees with that fang erect coming at my finger it was like a slow motion movie and I saw how he just by millimeters missed me and I thought to myself that was really 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 stupid don't let compassion rule the day. This is a dangerous animal. Take it easy. And then the day came when it actually happened. And I tell you, it is not comfortable. I was taking a Wormslung, a large green male. The males are usually green in uh, the northern parts of the South African territories. And down in the Cape area, they black and yellow. Very beautiful. Females are generally brown was taking it out, moving it into another enclosure just to do a little cage cleaning. And usually Wormslung don't try to bite you at all. In fact, you can take it on a hook stick or even a branch and uh, they, they don't care. They just look at you, move them around. Very calm snake, 
very, very seldom tries to bite. And for some reason, I don't know why, it suddenly swiped sideways at me and I lifted my hand to try and fend it off and the whole body came at me and it brushed across my fingers and when it had brushed across my fingers there were two scratches I think it was two, could it be more and there was blood and I thought I have now done it and I was quite young there was anti-venom uh, anti available and the best thing to do under those circumstances is to head for hospital and sit there and let them keep you under observation until it is clear that you haven't been envenomated or if you have and the sim symptoms start they can then call in the anti-venom and start the treatment but being young and arrogant I just stayed at home I did phone all my friends, the ones that counted, my partner, and those who knew about snakes and the snake bite, and I said, listen, guys, this is what has happened. I'm staying at home. Um, i let you know every so often. I don't want to tell my family, just in case. And so if you don't hear from me, please phone. And if I don't pick up the phone, um, we had no cell phones and of course so it was a landline we were using if I don't pick up the phone please come across because I may not be conscious and I sat and I sat and I sat for interminable hours and it went through the night and the following day I did fall asleep woke up I kept looking at the wound waiting for the oozing of blood waiting for discoloration waiting for sleepiness waiting for a headache waiting for some symptom and the following day right through the day it was clear no oozing of blood as you would expect eyes were clear mind was fine i wasn't falling sleepy at the wrong times of falling asleep or feeling sleepy should i say and i did sleep the next night I couldn't stay awake even if I tried woke up the next day very irresponsible to do this woke up the next day still no oozing of blood and I felt I was clear we then agreed all of us that there was no problem I had not been envenomated and uh, that I could proceed which I did 